Mr. White stood six feet in front of Kenny. Jeremy sat two feet away to Kenny's left. How far was Mr. White from Jeremy? Um, when you run into a story problem, draw the diagram when none is given. It's going to help you better understand it. Even if you think you can do it in your head, draw the diagram. So here's Mr. White right at the front and six feet in front of Kenny. So let's put Kenny right here and we'll label it six feet. So Mr. White stood six feet in front of Kenny. You know, so I'm rereading the problem and I'm comparing to what I just drew. So that way I can make sure that it's it's matching up with what I, I read. Now, Jeremy sat two feet away to Kenny's left. Well, here's Kenny. He's facing Mr. White, we're assuming. And so uh, let's just say to Kenny's left right here is two feet. And that's where we'll put Jeremy. So that's the information given. Um, and now the question is, how far was Mr. White from Jeremy? Well, here's Mr. White, and there it is. It's Jeremy, a straight line that I'm putting in blue. You notice that the right triangle is made. Uh, let's pull out a, a blue highlighter. Here's the right triangle. Um, right here would be the right angle, and so the six feet and two feet would be the legs. And the distance from Mr. White to Jeremy would be the hypotenuse because it's opposite of the right angle uh, shown here. So let's just go plug our information in and solve with the Pythagorean formula. And basically, uh, using the calculator now, square root of 40 would be about 6.3 feet, rounded to the nearest tenth. So how far is Mr. White from Jeremy? About 6.3 feet. Um, this was a, a better cleaned up diagram of it. You know, here we are. We've got Mr. White here, six feet in front of Kenny and Jeremy two feet to Kenny's left, um, but it's still the basic idea, but I, I set this up just that way you could see the right triangle relationship a little bit better. A um, couple of helpful hints. Again, I mentioned uh, you need to draw a diagram uh, if it's not given. Uh, do this because you're not going to see the words Pythagorean theorem. You're not going to see anything talking about a right triangle, but if you can make the diagram, you'll be able to see it, and uh, if that distance that you need is, is you know one side of that right triangle, to work out. If there's no right triangle, eh, use a different strategy or you set it up wrong. Um, it just depends on the, the type of problem you have. Let's take a look at a second example here. How far is it uh, from home plate or home base to second base? So you see this little dashed line. It's, it's wondering, hmm, how far is it? Now the rest of the diagram gives us some interesting information here. From home plate to first base is 90 feet. From first base to second base is 90 feet. And you'll see that that relationship is, is made there. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and, and connect home plate and first base there with a line. And second base to first base with a line. And now um, you should start to see an interesting right triangle relationship uh, set up there. There's actually two right triangles here. We could do the same on the other side too. And uh, the right angles is right there. So since we don't need this one, I'm going to erase it now. And let's go through and ask ourselves, do we have legs or hypotenuses where these 90 feet are? Well, since the right angle is right there, we've definitely got legs. So let's go put it into our formula and find out how long our hypotenuse is, and that'll answer our question to how many feet are between home plate and second base. And 
Let's see what we get for the square root of 16,200. It would be approximately 127.2 uh, feet between home plate and second base. And uh, you could use this uh, style to answer any number of questions on a baseball field or softball field. Uh, you just need the dimensions between the, the plates, and um, then you could kind of switch it up. You can even find the distance between first base and third base very easily also. Um, Hopefully, uh, you'll start to see, though, that when, when you start out with a given diagram, they don't necessarily have the right triangles drawn in, though. You have to kind of look for that relationship yourself. Um, you notice, again, in the question, it doesn't say anything about Pythagorean theorem. Nothing is shown about a triangle. It's just it's up to you uh, to take from there and go, well, I could make a right triangle by doing the following right here, what you're seeing on the screen, and then... It's also up to you to recognize that this would be a right angle right there. Remember, a diamond, uh, pretty much like this, is like a square that's just kind of rotated. Um, so um, all four corners are 90 degrees. The last one's a little bit more of a challenge, though. And I still want to remind you, hey, draw the diagram. If it's not given, um, see if you can get the, the distance that you need between two points as part of that triangle. And if not, um, just be ready to move on to a different strategy, uh, just in case it's not a Pythagorean theorem. But this time, I'm actually going to give you the diagram. Uh, Mary was sitting on the ground flying a kite. Uh, she had 13 uh, yards of line led out to fly her kite, and the kite was 14 feet in front of her. How high up was the kite? Now, keep in mind, uh, even though the, the picture is a little weird, Mary's sitting on the ground, so that, that string or, uh, is of kite line is... is touching the ground in our hand and it's going straight to the kite in a straight line 13 yards but it's not going straight up it's kind of like a diagonal line there um, 14 feet in front of Mary you can see the 14 feet here you could then go straight up and get the bottom of the kite right there and we're wondering this X right here how high up is the kite and you see the right triangle so go solve and then hit play, and I really encourage you to watch this, this video. Hit play when you're ready to see if you got it right. Okay, so the first problem I'm going to see is, is that this is in yards, and this is in feet. And that's a huge issue. You, you've got to have all the units uh, the same in a problem. Um, so we've got a decision to make. We can convert uh, feet into yards, or we can make the yards into feet. Well, uh, we'd have to be dealing with the decimal uh, if we went feet to yards. So let's just multiply these 13 yards by 3, so we'll figure out how many feet we're dealing with there. And 13 times 3 is 39 feet. So let's just replace this. I'm going to scratch it out. And I'm going to replace it with 39 feet. And I'm also going to take the time to recognize that it's the hypotenuse that's given as the 39 feet. So this is the hypotenuse, and that means that the 14 feet is one of the legs, and the distance we need to find is the second leg. So there we go, we've got that highlighted. And let's just use the Pythagorean formula, plug it in, and go solve. Taking my time here to make sure I don't make a mistake. And that would round to 36.4 feet. Um, quickly do a check there. Is, is the leg shorter than a potnoose? Yes. So uh, that fact works out. Um, 
pay close attention to what the problem wants, though. How high up is the kite? They did not specify whether they wanted it in feet and yards, um, so that would be fine. If they had wanted it in yards, you would have taken the, the 36.4 feet and just simply divided it uh, by 3. And so um, 36.4 divided by 3 would have been 12.133 repeating. And um, you just need to, to be aware that these problems are possibly going to try to, to play uh, mind games with you. And you just need to know what the problem wants and then go about getting it. Um, it's still the same basic Pythagorean theorem problem where you, you have two sides of the right triangle and you're trying to find the missing side. But uh, one last step would be um, converting uh, yards to feet. And then there's one other problem that we did the other day, but I just want to put this in here because it was really interesting. So try this one. The diagram at the right shows how a post was broken. What was the original height of the post? So just hit pause and jump in when you're ready. Okay, um, just that way we're clear about it. Um, the original post was straight up. And we're kind of like, hmm, how tall is it? Well, we don't know what the picture uh, was trying to show right now until you realize that this post that was laying uh, on the ground and leaned up against this post is actually part of the original post. This actually was stacked on top. Uh, there was some sort of strong wind or something um, that just snapped this post in almost half, and then the top part just kind of fell down just like that. Okay. Um, they tried to do the same trick uh, that we looked at with the last problem, and that was where they gave us uh, two different types of units. It's 18 inches from the bottom of the, the post to the other post, and this one is 2 feet. Uh, what's the easiest one to do? Uh, really, it's, it's just as easy uh, to go feet. That'd be 1.5 feet, or you can make this into 24 inches. Uh, most people are going to go 24 inches, so that's what we're going to do here, and um, I hope that you all see that the right angle is right there. So we can use the Pythagorean formula. Um, let's see, this is a leg, this is a leg, and this is the hypotenuse. So we need to solve for C in this case. Eighteen squared is three hundred and twenty four. Twenty four squared is five hundred and seventy six. And then if we add those two together, you get nine hundred. And as you've seen time and again, we just put a square root sign on the other side to get rid of this two that was an exponent. And the square root of 900 is 30. So C equals 30, and we were working with inches this time. So it's 30 inches. And if we wanted to find out for feet, like uh, what was the original height of the post in feet, we would take the 30 and divide it by 12, because there's 12 inches in a foot, and you would get 2.5 feet. So you could have also put 2.5 feet uh, if, if you went the minority route in chose to use the feet. So we'll just put this one as 30 inches though, but again, um, because it did not specify what type of unit, two and a half feet would have been fine also. You also could have written that as two and a half as a mixed number. Um, if, if anybody got five over two for feet, that one, uh, while technically correct, would probably not be uh, the exact format that most people are looking for. But um, <laughs> I almost made the mistake, and this is the reason that I wanted to bring this up. What was the original height of the post? Well, that part of the post was 30 inches, but don't forget the 24 inches that was on this side. Together, this post was standing straight up and down uh, with 24 inches right here and 30 inches on top. So technically, uh, the true answer to this question is 54 inches or, um, let's see, 4.5 feet. 4.5 feet. 
So the the tricky one on this one was not so much the units, even though that was the first thing that probably got some people. It was that you wanted to come back and add the two sides of the triangle that made the full height of the post.